if this is true and it's it's very worrying news, um, then it is a very, very significant moment in, in the war. But what I would say is it is a moment for cool heads uh, because, uh, I mean, firstly, it's a tragedy if two Polish civilians have been killed. Secondly, it is a violation of, of NATO territory. But there's a huge difference between that having happened and a deliberate act by Russia against Poland, a member of NATO. Yes. So definitely a moment for cool heads. Now, let me just bring you this as it's breaking. At this stage, I guess we'd have to say uh, a not uh, a fully confirmed report, but this is from the AP agency in Poland, where it's reported that a senior US intelligence official has said Russian missiles have crossed into NATO territory, into the territory of Poland, and the, the report goes on to say that two people were killed. Obviously a serious, very serious development. We're going to be watching that story as it develops. We will keep you entirely up to, up to speed with that here on Times Radio. So watch for more developments on that story. A report of Russian missiles crossing into NATO territory, striking in Poland, reportedly killing two people there. So Tom Tom Newton Dunn joins me now. I think we're going to be talking Tom in a, in a short while. Let's let's just pick up on that point there, Tom. Some what looks like some breaking news. It's on social media now, and there's a line attributed to the AP agency in Poland of Russian missiles crossing into NATO territory, like landing and striking in Poland. Reported the two people killed. Obviously, well, an enormously important develop as that story as that develops. Yeah, that that is a very very big deal indeed, John. For the simple reason, even if it's only a few feet inside Polish territory, that would be a attack intentional or otherwise, on NATO soil. And that is the one thing NATO have always said is their red line. It has to be red line. Technically, it would trigger an Article 5 response, which is everyone coming to the rescue and the help of a, of a NATO country. If it is quite obviously a misfiring and an inaccurate firing and there aren't any casualties, then clearly NATO will not feel the need to escalate this on. But this is, I think absolutely everybody's worst nightmare and what happens quite frankly when you're a big state you invade another country and you start throwing around projectiles very near to a nato border let's just let's just develop that thought a little more while we wait for more news of this of this report wait for confirmation of this of this report of of, of russian missile striking into into polish territory of course poland and nato a nato member the article of, of, of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization is very clear on this, that an attack on one NATO member is an attack on all and triggers under Article 5 an automatic response. It mm. means a trigger for war between NATO and Russia. So we can take it from this, we can assume from this report, if this is correct, and it's from it looks like an authoritative source, if this report is correct, there will now be very, very uh, busy efforts being made to establish, first of all, what has happened, and then contact to establish whether or not these missiles, if they did indeed land in NATO uh, Polish territory, were an accident, whether they strayed off an intended course, and, and to that extent amount to an enormous a potential escalation, or whether it was something which could be explained away. And if there is such an explanation available, is it going to be given? Because I guess that would be playing out, as mm. I speak to you now, Tom, very urgently between both sides. Yeah, completely. Uh, this has come from, by the way, uh, the Polish Prime Minister Marzyski's actual spokesman. And, and he's tweeted that the Prime Minister is calling, as a matter of urgency, the Committee of the Council of Ministers for National Security and Defence Affairs. So the polls are taking this very seriously, as indeed they would. I think what really matters, John, over the next sort of few hours and potentially a day or so is what Russia says. If Russia do not account for what's happened, A, are there casualties? Is there damage to property? Is there any collateral damage uh, from this? B, was it obviously a misfiring, obviously a miscalculation? We know the Russians, and my time as defence correspondent would, would tell me this, the Russians are depleting fast through their stockpiles of stuff. You know, they, they've got through a lot of their smart munitions now, and they're now firing heavy, dirty bombs, which are notoriously inaccurate, especially when they fire them from standoff. So their aircraft normally launch these sort of missiles from hundreds of miles away because they don't dare go inside Ukraine because Ukraine's air defence systems are so strong. So the, the, the ability to make mistakes like this are, are really plentiful. Yeah. So the polls will be looking, what has happened on the ground? Is it clearly a misfiring? And then they'll be looking to Russia, to the Kremlin, to come up with an explanation in very short order. Namely, 
an apology and, and a, an explicit expression from the Kremlin that this was not intended to happen. Because if it was intended to happen, as you say, it's extremely serious indeed. And under Article 5, or quite frankly any NATO responsibility, NATO will demand, first of all, I think, a response from Russia. And if they don't get a, a suitable response, a super explanation, then potentially, and it is still a big potential, yeah. we're looking at the grounds of retaliation. Well, I mean, then we get into a whole new level. Of, of of conflict. It's worth mentioning, isn't it, by way of, of the dark context to all of this. At the early stage of the of the conflict, the war in Ukraine, the invasion of Ukraine, there was some very, very tough talk from Russia, a warning the allies of NATO against supporting and reinforcing and supplying supplying Ukraine. And of course a lot of that work, supplying uh, a Ukraine with weapons, with munitions, it was going through NATO NATO bases, including some airfields and so on in Poland, mm. uh, close to the border of, of NATO. We can now get the thoughts of Major General Rupert Jones, who's been with us in our briefing room today. Very keen to get Rupert, and welcome back to the programme, to get your thoughts and your analysis of what we're hearing. Incomplete reports, but Tom newton Dunn telling us this is coming from the spokesman to the Polish leader, and we're hearing from an, uh, sources including AP News Agency. Before we hear from you, uh, Rupert, more from Tom newton Dunn. John, I can tell you some breaking news now. Poland have just said, uh, or this is US intelligence officials now reporting two people who've been killed yeah. in Poland by these strikes. So yeah. this situation is now deteriorating pretty fast. And that's the report from the AP News Agency. Rupert, Major General Rupert Jones, former standing forces commander, what do you think? Well, John, I mean, firstly, uh, if this is true and it's it's very worrying news, um, then it is a very, very significant moment in, in the war. But what I would say is it is a moment for cool heads uh, because, uh, I mean, firstly, it's a tragedy if two Polish civilians have been killed. Secondly, it is a violation of, of NATO territory. But there's a huge difference between that having happened and a deliberate act by Russia against Poland, a, a member of NATO. Yes. So definitely a moment for cool heads. And well, Russia, the Kremlin, will be very well aware of that. I mean, if we're if we're trying to weigh up, I don't know the factors at play here. We will know as a fact because Russia will clearly know the consequences of a deliberate or inexplicable but inexplicable attack on targets on NATO territory. It is exactly the kind of escalation that's been feared from the start of all of this. From your knowledge, Rupert, can you just share with, with us your, your thoughts and understanding of what will be happening now in terms of trying to communicate between the NATO side and the Russian side to establish what happened here and why? Uh, absolutely right. I mean, firstly, you know, an attack on one is an attack on all. That is, that's the kind of that's the the, the basis of, of NATO. I mean, I, I think we sh we should say that uh, the attacks by Russia on Ukraine today were across the country, including into the west of the country. Yes. And therefore, that increases the risk of an error with either rogue missile or or some such going into into Polish Polish territory. This is where all the channels, indeed, only today you and I, John, discussed the need for uh, channels to remain open with Russia. And this is where all those channels will now be working overtime, both uh, from capitals into Moscow, but also on the, on the ambassadorial net to try and understand what has happened. I mean, one imagines that, that Washington will be on the on the line, you'd imagine, as we speak, pretty much with 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 the Kremlin because those those contacts exist don't they at a very high military level? Uh, it, it, exactly so. Th those those lines absolutely exist. They exist from the United Kingdom as well. Uh, but this this is when uh, the likes of General Milley, you would expect the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, the most senior member of the American Armed Forces, uh, may well be uh, speaking to uh, Karasmov, his his opposite number, and indeed, of course, um, uh, the Foreign Minister uh, uh, Lavrov was last I saw was still in Bali so it may well be he's having some difficult conversations at the G20. All right Rupert Jones thank you for that that insight at this stage as this story develops I mean perhaps you can stay with us we'd like to get your expertise and draw on that as this as this story plays out you're listening to Times Radio with the news that missiles Russian missiles have landed on NATO territory in Poland more after the news.